Hey guys, my name is Niall, and I am making a cinematic short film within the Unreal 5 engine. This month I spent my time building large-scale environments, and I learned a lot of tricks along the way. My short film features four primary levels. These include topside, church interior, the tunnel, and lastly, the lair. The topside has seen some iterations over the past few weeks, but I have settled for a mountain range that is battling a thick snow blizzard. So to start, I will create a basic landscape and build layers to expand my world. It's really important that I get the basic layout completed first. This way I can quickly animate my hero objects and set up cameras as soon as possible. So to start, I will import a height map to quickly generate a landscape with mountains and simple terrain. You can use Gaia or simply search for free height maps on the internet. I have provided some in the description to get you started. From here, I can create a set of materials to paint my landscape and add variety throughout. I find that by using a low intensity of my brush, I could blend materials and create some interesting results. To create roads, I used the spline feature and then added a material to that spline for the road itself. At this point, it was time to add trees and scatter objects throughout my world. Procedural generation really came in handy, saving me a bunch of time. I'm using a plugin from the Unreal Market, but you can get the same results within Unreal 5.2. Using this plugin, I can strategically place trees and objects in my world, either within a procedural box or within a spline. I find the spline tool worked really well for placing tree lines and telegraph poles, whilst the box mode was really good for scouting rocks on hillsides and mountain ranges. Procedural generation only gets you so far, however, so be sure to get into the scene and place individual assets where needed within your camera frame. In no time I had a fleshed out environment that would be the foundation of my scene and from here we could focus on the next block, lighting and weather effects. With the ultra dynamic sky add-on, I was able to create some amazing lighting and weather effects within my scene. By adjusting the weather preset to the snow blizzard, and adjusting the cloud coverage at 2, the cloud type to volumetric aurora, I was able to lock in my desired look. It is still a little dark however, so let's increase the night strength and set that to a value of 3. Tweaking the light shafts is a really good way to add subtle bloom to the lighting. Just be sure not to push it too far. By going into the search panel and typing fog, you could scroll down to find the volumetric fog box which always makes your scenes look more cinematic. By adjusting the height fall off factor, we can reveal our mountains in the background. Weather is a great way to add movement to your scene, and for our scene, the snow and wind bring life to all our still frames. So let's add some subtle wind to our trees, a simple snow particle effect, and lastly, let's animate our characters into our world. Sequencer is a powerful tool for animating objects within Unreal, and the goal here is to keep the sequencer as clean as possible. I find that by adding multiple objects into an empty actor worked best, as I can then animate that instead of cluttering my sequencer. To animate my fire truck from end to end only required two keyframes. The camera reel saved me a lot of time as I was able to attach my empty actor to the reel itself, which could then be animated. With a few final rotation tweaks, my fire truck was racing through my landscape. Animating cameras is super easy within Unreal. You can simply repeat the process with a different camera crane or place your camera into the empty actor to track your objects. Pretty cool. With our scenes complete, let's render out our animation and import them into DaVinci Resolve. The movie render queue is a great place to start. I always start by removing the JPEG feature and replacing it with an EXR sequence. This way we can export an uncompressed image and work within the ACES color range within Resolve. Next, I'll add a game override to remove any adjustments that might lower the quality of my render. For console commands, I'll add an R.motion blur quality and set that to a value of 2. This just smooths out the motion of those snow particles. Set a location directory and click export local. Post-production is the final step for taking your art to the next level. 
when you import your renders, you need to adjust a few settings to take full advantage of the EXR sequence. I like to enter the Fusion tab and add a Color Space Transform node. From here, I can select the ACES color range and regain my color data. Once that's complete, I'll then move into the Color tab, and I like to start with my shadows, midtones, and highlights. Then moving on to adding more effects, such as my lookup tables, my vignettes, my blur, my glow, and anything else that needs to be added. The final node to add is film grain. Just make sure to add this last within Fusion because it can slow down your playback speed a fair bit. Building environments is hard and takes a lot of patience to get the image that you desire. So take your time, don't rush, and simply trust the process. My name is Niall, and thank you for watching. If you would like to support this channel and the project, consider subscribing and heading over and checking out the Patreon. If you want to learn how to plan your projects more effectively, watch this video next.